In today's Blender tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to make this dynamic bowl sphere thing that kind of comes down onto this disc here and deforms it. It's very satisfying and um, I just enjoyed it. I'm gonna be showing you the exact process. Um, now this one here, I will say it's my original, so I added a bit more um, detail with the materials and the plants here, but today I'm gonna to show you how to do this exact same thing. So this original one here will be on my Patreon. But the result we're gonna be getting today is pretty much the exact same thing, just like I said, exact same thing. I'm just gonna be showing you how to get model of this, do the dynamics, set it all up, and it's up to you to add in your own fancy textures and some assets if you wanna make it your own thing. So let's jump into it, and I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. So if a new scene opened up in Blender, let's select all of the default objects and just press delete. We're gonna go Shift A, we're gonna add in a cylinder. And with the cylinder active, we're gonna tab into edit mode. We're gonna to go to our face select option and we're gonna select this top face. We're gonna go I to inset and let's go about this much. Then we're gonna go E to extrude, we're gonna extrude it down. And then we're gonna do another I to inset. Let's inset it about this much and then E to extrude up. And this is just a little decorative detail here. And we're gonna go I to inset about this much and then we're gonna go E and let's just extrude this up quite high. Okay, because we want this to be out of the view of camera later. And let's go X and just delete that face. And let's tab back out. And now we're gonna go over to our modifiers and we're gonna give this a bevel modifier. We're gonna come here to our amount and let's increase the segment as well so we have a nice fine bevel. Let's right click and go shade smooth. So now we have this part over here done. We're gonna go into our front orthographic view. We're gonna go Shift A. Let's add in a UV sphere. We're going to tab into edit mode with this UV sphere. We're going to go G, X and move it along the X to the side. And under our modifiers, let's give this a mirror modifier. And now we have it over here because the origin point is in the middle still because we moved it in edit mode. So it should be on the X axis by default since we're in our front orthographic view. So we have it about this position. Let's go G, Z and let's bring it down to about here. And let's zoom out a bit, let's scale it up. So we want it to be bigger than this part over here. So let's go about this much. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go Shift A, we're gonna add in a cylinder. And we're gonna go G, and we're still in edit mode. We're gonna bring it and put it right above the sphere over here, so it's in the middle. And then we're gonna grab this top face, and we're gonna go G, Z, and bring it down like so. And then we're gonna go E to extrude and S to scale. And then we're gonna go E to extrude, we're gonna extrude it up to about here. And then we're gonna go Shift D to duplicate this face, right click to let go. And then we're gonna go R, Y, 9, 0, and we're gonna press enter. Then we're gonna go G, X, and we're gonna move it over like so. And then we're just gonna go E to extrude and extrude it over like this. And then from this point, we can select this face and go I to inset it about this much, and then E to extrude. And we're gonna extrude it all the way in like so. And so now it's a little bit close. We're gonna press A to select everything and we're just gonna go G and move it out a little bit more. And let's go about here and that's looking okay. Maybe even a little bit closer like that. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, we're gonna select a face here and holding in shift, select a face here. Control L and select these two parts and then go P and separate selection, tab back out. Now with these two active, we're gonna go ahead and apply that modifier to the mirror. And holding in shift, we're gonna select this one and we're gonna go control J and we're gonna join it. And we're gonna right click and go shade smooth. Now these things are getting that same bevel. We're gonna take these spheres and we're gonna give them a subdivision surface modifier. We're gonna right click, go shade smooth and let's apply that subdivision surface modifier. And let's also apply that mirror and now we're gonna take these two, we're gonna hold and shift and select this and go control J and join it. Now this is all one unit. Now we're gonna go G, Z and just move it up about here. We're gonna go shift A now, we're gonna add in a circle, tab into edit mode, go to your vertex option. And with all of this active, go S and then four. So S four and then press enter. And then we're gonna go control F. And we're gonna go grid fill. And then we're gonna right click, we're gonna go Subdivide. We're gonna go here to our subdivision tab and let's increase that a few times. So let's go with something like seven. 
We're gonna tab back out and let's grab this thing and we're gonna scale this down about this much. We're gonna bring it down and we want it big enough. This is completely up to you. But we want it to not go outside, but we want it to be a little bit in the inside like so. Then we're gonna go G, Z and just bring it up. And it's super important because we scaled this in object mode and not edit mode, we should go control A and make sure to apply that scale. That's very important because it's gonna matter with the proximity. So now we have our two main elements. Let's quickly go shift A, let's just add in a torus. S to scale it way up and then tap into edit mode and then go alt S and just scale it in along the normals and then scale it even a bit more. Now we have this nice rim, tab back out, right click, go shades move. And if you want to add in a simple environment, just select this sphere again, holding in shift and alt, just left click, going all the way around like this, just to select all of these verts and then go shift D to duplicate it, right click to let go, hit P and then separate selection, tab back out and then grab this duplication, circle.001, tab into edit mode and select everything by pressing A, E to extrude and S to scale and extrude it out. And now we have a floor like this. Tab back out and the reason we don't wanna just put something under here because this is gonna get displaced. So you could add in a plane like this and scale it up but then that's gonna be in the way. So that's why we did it like that. So now we have our elements in place. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna select this, um, these balls here, these kind of whatever you wanna call them, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> I haven't come up with a name for them yet but we wanna go into our front view over here and we just wanna go into our front orthographic and we want them just over the surface like this. And we're gonna go onto frame one and go I and we're gonna insert a location and a rotation. Then we're gonna come over to frame 40 and on frame 40, we're gonna go G, Z, and we're gonna bring them in. And in our front view, you can see they're dipping in about this much and we're gonna go I and insert a location and a rotation. And now we're gonna go N to bring up our properties panel and we're gonna to go to our item and let's come all the way to frame 140 and let's select these spheres here, or these balls, rotating balls. And on 140, we're gonna come here and we're gonna go on the Z, we're gonna type in 360, and over this, we're gonna press I to insert a keyframe. You can now see this is yellow. And we're gonna come over here and press I to insert a keyframe as well for the location. So now if we go to frame one and we hit the spacebar, we're gonna see this. So it rotates. And then what it's gonna do, let's grab this um, 140 here, the keyframe. Let's go Shift D to duplicate it and drag it to 150. Just so I have a little bit of a pause. And then we're gonna grab the first keyframe here and go Shift D to duplicate it. And let's drag this all the way to 180 so it goes back. So it quickly spins back up like this. And now it's back where it started. We're gonna leave it at 250 frames. But now that we have all of this in place, make sure you save. So I'm gonna go file, save as, I'm just gonna save it to my desktop. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add our dynamic. So let's first of all, select our, we still have it selected here. So if this selected, let's go over to our physics properties. Let's give it a dynamic paint and let's make it a brush. And let's go add brush. Now we're gonna select our canvas. Let's go and give that a dynamic paint and let's make this one a canvas and let's go add canvas and let's scroll down and change the surface type to displace. Now you're going to see here it's already kind of working for us which is really cool. So let's select this with this still select let's just go right click and go shade smooth as well. So if you go to frame one and you hit this that's what we have. How cool is that? So what we can also do is we can come here and click on this dissolve. So now what will happen it's over 250 frames. As these things get displaced, they'll also dissolve. So it all goes back to where it was, like this. So you can see as it goes up, this all kind of goes back into place, which is exactly what we want. But we want this to happen a bit quicker, so let's make it 190. So it's 190 frames, and that'll help with making this loopable. So as this comes in, it does its thing. You can see here, goes back up and they just fade, which is exactly what we want. And then at 250, it should all be gone pretty much. Uh, maybe even a bit faster, 150. You guys can tweak with that. That's what I'm gonna go with. So now we have this in place. Let's go Shift A, let's add in a camera. I'm gonna go to my camera settings and make the focal length 90. 
and under my output I'm going to make it 1080 by 1080p and then with the camera active press 0 on your number pad G middle mouse button and zoom back out like so and then just get a position that you like I'm going to go with something like this let's go to our render engine let's change it to cycles if you have a GPU make sure to use it if you don't don't worry about it just stick to CPU and under our render max samples let's make it 50 you can set it for higher but I'm just doing a tutorial at the moment so now we can go shift a let's add in a area light G Z move it up I'm going to make this 400 on the strength and I'm going to increase the size to about 5 meters and now I'm going to go Z and go rendered and then I'm going to go control B and just drag over the camera just to limit the render to the camera here and now what we can do is we can duplicate this light and rotate it in towards the scene here and this is completely up to you you can um, light this however you want I'm just going to go with three basic lights here and I'm going to increase the strength of this one to maybe like 500 really depends on the scale of your scene but this is what I have here and maybe you can even go over to your real properties and give this a sky texture and set the strength down to 0.2 or something and then just try rotating your sun. You can try whatever you want. I'm going to go with something like this. Might make it even 0.05. Okay, so now we have this lit up. Now what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to show you how to do that um, material effect. We have the colors changing dynamically. So let's go over to our shading workspace. Let's go into our camera view. Let's press Z and go rendered. And let's select this disk over here to canvas and go new to create a material. And let's drag on the base color and let's type in geometry and get the geometry node. And let's drag the pointiness value into the base color. And now we're going to go shift a search and type in color, grab a color ramp and place it on this cable. Now we want to hit the space bar so this animation plays and we get it um, affecting the canvas. And then when we have a shot, we can kind of drag these values closer together and do it carefully till you start to see the sort of gradient uh, happening here, kind of like the edges. Depending on where you do this, we want to kind of just clamp these two values together. And now we have these two colors. So what we can do now is we can take this, move it up and go shift a search and get a color ramp, place another one here. And now we can take these two and we can make them whatever color we want. So I'm going to make this one like a greenish color, maybe grab this one here and maybe for example, make it blue. You can do whatever you want. I'm going to go to the roughness and just bring it down to make this more reflective. And then let's grab these, um, this object here. Let's go new. Let's make it metallic. I'm going to make it kind of like a coppery color. Bring this down a bit on the value. So I should have done that for the base color. So I'm going to do that for the base color. There we go. And I'm going to bring the roughness down a bit. For my original, I added some roughness with a noise texture. You can do the same thing. And then um, I also added a wood texture to this middle part, but that's up to you guys. You guys can go ahead, add as many materials as you want. But for the tutorial's sake, I'm just going to keep this really, really basic. And then maybe select this ring here and give that a metallic material as well. And then you can select the whole stage here and just give that a bit of a darker material. Maybe make it a little bit greenish to go with our theme here. And uh, that's about it. So this is how I made mine. The only difference is with my original, I spent a little bit more time with the lighting and the materials, but this is how I made this um, animation. So make sure to save and also select the canvas and make sure to go to your physics, go down and under the cache, just make sure to bake this into your blend file. So when you render it, you won't have any issues where you don't see what's happening. It's always important to bake dynamics in Blender. So that is how I made this. So I'm going to show you my original. And my original is exactly what I just showed you guys how to do. The only difference is I added in some of these plant assets. And on top of that, I just did a little bit more work on my materials. But it, what I'm showing you here is the exact same thing I just taught you guys how to do. So this one that you see here will be on Patreon. This is my original. I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you next time for another one. So stay safe.